we are on the world famous Lake Gunnersville. It's ledge season officially. That means everybody else is also on the world famous Gunnersville. There's boats everywhere, which are kind of always is here. But the problem is this time of year they're not really spread out. Everybody's kind of rotating the same stuff. There's not that many good places that these fish get. Hold on. Got interrupted. Got interrupted. Get a bite. You gonna get them? Case in point. <laughs> That's why everybody is on the world famous Gunnersville. Because you can't even make an intro without getting a bite. That's how it is here. Actually, what happened is there was just a big tournament here. FOW had a big tournament and they caught the heck out of them. So, I mean, you boy had to come up here and try it. We're out here with my buddy Ryan Salzman today. He's the Alabama bass guy, meme lord multiple titles but he knows the world famous Gunnersville pretty well and we're gonna try to catch us a bass or two today and not fall in which I'm good at oh he missed it maybe you get it again it's spot lock well that hook's about that long on that worm so fish that size ain't gonna eat that <laughs> <It's like size. laughs> so this place right here it has mussels and it's all clay so sometimes they're on the clay and sometimes they're on the mussels. It's kind of dependent on water clarity, current, wind. Like today, it's really windy. And you kind of got to move around the place and see where the bass are sitting. Now, he has 360. Uh, I, I don't have 360. I'm a Lawrence guy, so I'll be interested to use it today and put it to work, catch a few more bass, and find some big ones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Better fish than the last one, at least. Get your head up, boy. Come on in here. That's a fat sucker. He is fat. He ate it, too. Mm. I don't know what he just ate, but it was probably the one I just threw back. Got him one? Oh, he's dropped it. But come on, you jerks. The whole line was limp. How you not get it? He got it right behind that 14 off. He dropped it again! <laughs> what is wrong with these fish? Might be the color. I mean, two June bug choked in it and red bug, they're tapping it. So it's all about how you wiggle the worm. Oh, okay. All about how you wiggle it. Fish it. Ryan, zero fish three. I'm in it right now. I'm in, I'm in it. You just freaking count the shells. What you can tell with this three quarter ounce head is these are about three and a half inch wide shells. And that means you're going to have three pound bass. You learn something new every day. Three and a half inch? That's kind of big. <laughs> he just made that shit up. That's how big you did. Like, you remember that one he picked up off the ground the other day? Yeah. That was like a four incher. Whenever y'all said shells, I was thinking it was like a bunch of like those. Little ones? Yeah. No, these are, these are the ones that big. Uh, they, they get five, six inches here. I think this is, a, this is an adolescent shell bit. They look like they were tight to the bottom. Their shadows were just real close to their dots. Yeah. So that's the problem? I would believe, in my mind, yeah. Get behind him. I'm gonna do a sneak attack. I'll just show you a five pounder like this. Sneak attack. I get as close to the fish as possible so you can just feel their aura, you know? That's why you put the spot lock on, walk to the bed, and you can feel kind of move their ears when you get close to them. Wind is blowing. My hair is flowing. <laughs> I got no hair. There we go. Took, took throwing that worm in there. Maybe. It's barely hooked. This is how they're eating it. I was missing them earlier, guys. But look, barely got them. They're just nipping at it. The water got dirty the last two days from some rain, so ledge fishing gets a little bit weird when that happens. But sometimes you might be able to switch to a little darker jig and they eat it a little better, but we're gonna throw the mag trick worm. So that's what we got to tie it on. 
Guys, follow me. Big hit. Big hit. I call crappy big hit. Hmm. On that juice bag. Look at these fans got the iridescent. So pretty. That is weird, isn't it? See, see that, honey? See how his fans are effervescent? What did you call it? Iridescent? I'm effervescent? So Hunter has a Hunter has a, th a hang up where she likes to say that word effervescent. <laughs> Every time she gets an opportunity, she says effervescent, no matter what. Effervescent. Anything that's got a any kind of complicated sounding word, she calls it effervescent. Told you I was in that juice, didn't I? I saw him in that juice and I called OB. Kyle, give us a tip. Tip? Yeah. There you go. Not that. I'll give you a tip. When you're ledge fishing, make long casts. Have a full spool line, not a flipping reel on your worm rod. But I got my flipping reel. <laughs> Give me a June bug, by God. That's a good one, too. Kyle was back boating me. Had to throw over his head. Oh, we come on! That's not count. That is my log nut. You're out. So, if you, when you get bit, don't let it go all the way back down the bottom. Don't let it. So when you get that bite, oh, it took my worm. Feel it. <laughs> I told you. I felt the bite and I set the hook, it just went free. But guess what? I got a big bag of wormies. Everyone needs a bag of worms. I'm two for two on cast now. Kyle, keep throwing the shuttlecock. Kyle got one. You get bit? Stop. When you get bit, Kyle, reel. Don't swing. Okay? It's hard to. Just, just reel. You get bit again? <laughs> oh my god, give me my shuttlecock. <laughs> what am I doing here? You get bit that much. Get out of my way. Right. On the inside of the gate, it's just like that. Hard. Coming under your line. He's running at me now. Might be a spotted bass. He's tugging like. He had my other worm. worm. He had my other worm. It is a spotted bass. This is the one that robbed me, guys. Yeah, there, he there wasn't but two fish here. For real? He, he, he oh, sorry. He spit my other worm up. <laughs> and dude, he swear has a piece of hair on his head. He's, he's the one chasing his hair jig the whole time. You're kidding me. <laughs> Look through his hair on his head. Y'all got him. We can leave. We now. can leave now. We we caught him. <laughs> but that spot's quite different, dude. I thought of the spot before he ever got in here. I said, Where's there with my worm? And I looked and my worm was still on. Your worm and Kyle hair. <laughs> he's aggressive. So, this is how I teach people fishing a hair jig. Kyle is more of a slack line hook setter. And there's a lot of good slack line hook setters out there. Gerald Swindle. One of, being one of them, Kyle did the jerk nasty on him again. It was like a half and half reel and a half swing. I liked it though. He still didn't get it. He still didn't get it. Um, so basically when you get a bite on a swim bait, open hook bait, um, even a drop shot, so everybody knows to reel with a drop shot, right? And it just penetrates. Uh, basically the hair jig, the big open hook, when, they get, when you get bit, you want to reel. And if it stays pegged, you sweep and lean. And if it doesn't, you just keep reeling, right? So, and that way you can stay engaged with that fish, whether it's a swim bait or hair jig. Now, if you get the bite and you swing like this, if the hook isn't perfectly in line, a lot of times it'll just blow out of their mouth, right? And that's just what I've seen fishing a swim bait and hair jig on Tennessee River. Now, if you just, the analogy is, what is more efficient? Hitting a nail in with a hammer and one whack into a board, or if you take a press, and every time, push the nail in, just like a nail gun. A nail gun is like press, right? Just boom, presses it right in there. What is more efficient? A press is gonna press it in every time. A nail whacking in with a hammer, you're gonna have a percentage of misses. And when the fish is eating that bait, it's turned certain ways in its mouth, you don't know what angle that hook is. Now, if you start reeling, and it slowly comes out their mouth, and that hook starts penetrating skin, and then you press in, it's going to hook their mouth. 
and you're just gonna have a way higher percentage of hookups, at least on open hook baits. Um, now I set the hook like this with 98% of my techniques, maybe 99, especially flipping. That's where I initially learned it. You flip in there, everyone wants the slack line hook set, you know, I get tight and pull. Um, I learned how to flip from a bunch of Florida guys and that's what they do. So I was like, they're the experts, I'm gonna listen to them. So, oop, got a bite. You see how I just kind of reeled? Same kind of principle, but you're just doing it harder with a hair jig. No. Probably same thing. Spotted bass? Yep. Oh! That's a bigger spot. Okay, Tal, no, what's your opinion? I think it don't make no difference either way. I think wherever that hook is in their mouth, when you start pulling, that's what it's going to go through. I just don't, I just don't understand how there could be any difference unless you're saying that the fish is going to eat the bait a little bit better if you give it more time. So, I just, I don't see how there could be any difference at all. At an sharp angle. it is. Oh, at an angle, yeah, it's worse. But they're right. going in the exactly. same place. However, that but bait the bait is, is at an angle when they eat it a lot of times in their mouth. So you're saying so that when you pull real it, tight, it straightens out, gets a little bit of skin, and then you drive it in. Well, then if it gets a little bit of skin, they would already have that little bit of skin when you set the hook hole. Now, if it's sideways when you when you set, if, if it's sideways when you set Kyle in their mouth and it's turned weird and you set, it's going to spin it and fling it out of their mouth. Does that make sense? Yeah, if it's sideways when right, it's set. Right, and we, there's no way for no, us as humans to know. But there's no way that it's going to help you if you're just real either. If it's sitting sideways in their mouth, but you, if it reels, it's gonna pull it, out. it gradually puts tension into their mouth. That's that's a perfect scenario. If there was like a simulation, I like promise what you, what Bassmaster shows underneath the water. I promise that, you, that's what happens. It ain't what happens. I promise, dude. I've caught thousands and thousands of them, and I can promise you, I catch way more reeling into them than setting like that. That's because all you do. Right, so I'm an expert at it. No, that's all you do. So obviously, you're gonna catch more that way. No, it went from losing a lot of fish. To converting you know you obviously have a catch percentage yep. landing percentage yep my percentages went way up when i started reeling into the fish it could be drop shot does it again baby that one that yeah. one so here he comes Oh. Fatty. We went through a rotation of baits. We started out with a shuttlecock hair jig. And we threw a swim bait, I think, maybe. Maybe not. Threw a worm. They didn't want to eat the worm. He threw my weight off. I don't have another drop shot weight. Then I went to the drop shot. Nice little fatty, probably three pounds. Let it go. <sighs> I ain't retired this because I tournament we fished on 900. I got around that middle. <laughs> That's a good one. A three pounder school. He's he must be the one you just caught. He ain't doing a whole lot. <laughs> good. Maybe he ain't gonna break you up. Uh oh, come here. Come here, big dog. That's a stud. Uh oh. Biggest fish of the day coming on drop shot. Take that. Disrespectful. Was that disrespectful? It was so disrespectful. You gotta do it below the gunnel. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, fish. I apologize. <laughs> below the gunnel only. So that's a fish release violation. Yep. Coming right at me. Coming right at me. Is it big? I don't know. He's little. Look how little this thing is. Spotted bass. Spotted, dude, they're so mean. Look, he, he's, had, he's had a few hooks in his mouth, guys. A lock jaw. <laughs> How about this dirt bass? Bless his heart. Aww. It's because he eats hooks. <laughs> Should he stop eating hooks? He's got a big head shape. Do we get him? No, I get him. I mean, he does got big hands. He got the big He ain't that big. He ain't that little, though. No, he ain't little. I wouldn't call this one little. Should I boat swing him on rusty, frayed up 10 yes. pound shooter? Do it. I don't oh, know. Oh, God, you have to re it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that. I'll scare. Oh, oh, chill. Chill, fam. Let me grab him. You grab him. 
one? Four pounder? No, not quite. You need to get him? Here's your camera back. <laughs> oh, you just throw it back. Wait, why do I have the camera? I want to catch them. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Why you got the camera? They're all big ones here, dude. They're all big ones. <laughs> Kyle, they're all big ones. Do you think it'll fall off right here? Just chill right there. There you go. Is it running? Yeah, but I'm scared it's going to fall in the water. It won't fall. Ooh. You got him? One size, two pounder. Really on the worm. All right, just got off world famous Lake Gunnersville. It's a fun day today. We had kind of, I would say, some of the worst conditions you could have for ledge fishing. We actually had the wind blowing pretty good against the current, which makes it kind of funky whenever you're trying to do bow positioning and kind of blow some of the fish off of the spots that are not, you know, they're not super pinned to the whatever the current break is. Sometimes that wind will kind of make them get off those hard spots and stuff, but just kind of makes bow position a little bit annoying and casting a little bit annoying, all that type of stuff. But gotta give a thank you to my buddy Ryan Salzman. Put us on some fish today. Caught some, caught them pretty good. Probably had 18, 19 pounds, something like that. Just a kind of a on a this time of year, above average Gunnersville weight wise, but not really setting the world on fire because this this is the world famous Lake Gunnersville. But it was a fun day. We got to set the hook quite a few times and see a bunch of the lake. See a bunch of other boats fishing on the lake, which is pretty typical, but fun day for late May. 70% of y'all are not subscribed. All you gotta do is click the subscribe button, turn the alerts on, turn the bell on, all that type of stuff, whatever. But 70% of y'all are not. Just subscribe to the channel, man. Just do it. Just do it.